Hello, I'm Jana and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. Today I am here to present the Saturday Showcase for the Funky Junkie. And today we're going to be looking at some Tim Holtz and Ranger products. Specifically, we're going to be looking at distress mediums and how to alter holiday ephemera and some different ideology pieces. If you'd like to know exactly what materials I'm going to be using today, go ahead and pause. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner for some holiday creating fun. So today we're going to be looking at altering ephemera with different distress collage mediums. And I've got a mix of some different ideology pieces, some Halloween and some from the Christmas season. So these are some of the pieces that we're going to be playing with today. And here are some of the distress mediums we're going to be playing with. I also have a couple of things from Ranger. So we're going to be looking at altering with frosted crystal, using some sticky embossing powder to add things to different pieces of ephemera. We're going to be using some Distress Collage Medium Vintage. We're going to take a look at some glitters and mica flakes. Today I have some Nightfall Garland and some Midnight Mica Flakes. We're also going to be looking at some Classic Distress Collage Medium. We're going to be using some Distress Collage Crazing, some Crackle Paint Clear Rock Candy, and a few recent editions of Distress. These are specifically from the Halloween and the Christmas line. We have got Crypt Paste, Snowfall, and Icicle as well. So let's get started. To start with, we're going to be using some Distress Frosted Crystal. And we're going to be altering these two pieces of ephemera. I have a Halloween chip quote and some Christmas ephemera. So for this, we're going to be wanting our Distress Ink Dabber. I'm just going to smoosh some of that right onto the chip quote. We will tilt in the light to make sure we have good coverage. Set that aside and I'll do this piece at the same time. Off to the side I have some scrap paper that I will be using to spread the frosted crystal on just so we don't make a big mess and I can then tip it into the bottle once we're done. Okay, now we'll just tip this in the light to make sure it looks good. Yeah, that looks all right. Oh, I've got a little spot here that's missing some ink. Well, that's easy. Just go back in with the dabber and add a little bit more. Okay, so let's grab the scrap paper. Put the ephemera down. And I'm just going to dump the frosted crystal right on here. Now let's just take this and slide off the extra powder. All right, that is good coverage and I'll set that off to the side. And I'll do the same to the quote chip. Perfect. All right, let's just tip the powder right back into the jar and then we shall emboss. Okay. Now, time to get the embossing heat gun going. Okay, and here are our finished pieces. This is just done with the frosted crystal. As we can see, we've got some great texture going on. And if you tilt it, just a hint sparkle, just like frost on a cold glass. I'm really liking that over the black. That looks pretty cool. A quick, easy way to alter some ephemera. All right, moving on, let's move on to the Distress Collage Medium Vintage. Now this one's pretty simple. It's just regular collage medium, but it happens to be tinted. And this gives a great vintagey look to pieces of ephemera and ideology. So we're just gonna open that up and I'm gonna scrape some of the collage medium off of the foam. And I'm just going to put that right here on the side. Okay, I'm going to set the jar aside now and let's alter these pieces. 
So I like the skull here. This is one of the ideology skulls and I just want to make it a little bit darker, a little bit more grungy. So I'm just going to dip into the collage medium vintage and just smear it over the skull. Nothing fancy, pretty straightforward. And now I'm just going to set this aside to dry. Now let's alter one of the heavier baseboard pieces. So it's a nice cream color, but I'd like to make this just a little bit grungier. So we'll take some of the collage medium vintage and just smear it over the surface. And you can see right away that it darkens up this piece. Okay, I'm liking that. I don't really want to spread this on perfectly even, so I'm quite happy having a few splotches here and there in different shades. All right, so I'll set this aside and we'll come take a look at this later. Next, another quick way to alter something. If you've got pieces of ephemera that happen to be maybe just a little bit too shiny, you can always make them matte with the Distress Collage Medium Matte. And I'll just quickly clean up that little splotch right there. And again, I'm going to take one of the Ranger palette tools, dip in and just take a little bit of the Collage Medium, put it right on the mat, and let's alter some more ephemera. So the next piece we're going to, going to alter is this larger, shiny Christmas ephemera piece. So a little bit too shiny, want to tone it down a little bit. So just take some of the Collage Medium and rub it over the top. The great thing about the Collage Medium is that it doesn't take long to dry. So this should be easily dry within about two to three minutes, maybe even sooner. Drying time, of course, is going to vary depending on the temperature of your craft room and the humidity and the climate that you're working in. All right, we can see that we have a good coverage on here, so let's just set this aside. Okay, moving on. Next, I'm going to grab some of the Distress Collage Crazing. This stuff is always interesting, and it can create a fantastic texture, and this texture will pop when you add some Distress Crayon to it. But for right now, Let's grab some ephemera and add it to our project. So we're going to put some right on here. Okay, I'm getting pretty low on this, but let's scrape out a little bit. And I'm going to put that right onto here. And again, I'm going to just go in with my finger and spread that around. For the crazing medium, I find that the more you put on, the more prominent the little crazing lines will be. If you go too thin, you're going to get very fine crazing lines. So it all depends on what sort of effect you wish to achieve. But for this, I'm going to try to go kind of thick around the middle and then taper the crazing lines off around the edges of this clock face. And again, we'll have to set this one aside and wait a little bit. Usually for crazing medium, I tend to give the pieces about 20 to 30 minutes to make sure that all of the wonderful crazing lines have appeared. But again, this will vary from climate to climate, so you'll have to experiment and figure out what works best for you. Okay, let's go ahead and set this piece aside. Next, let's take a look at some Distress Crackle Paste Clear Rock Candy. For that, I'm going to use a piece of the Halloween thick board pieces and we're going to take a little bit of the Distress Rock candy and put it directly onto this moon. Now for the Clear Rock candy, I like to be fairly generous when applying this and the more we get on there, the more defined the cracks are going to be. Now this is going to give us a more shattered glass look and we'll do a comparison later to the new Icicle Medium, which as it says, gives you a very icy effect. 
So let's spread this on here and we'll leave it to sit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to set this aside. Okay, let's go directly into Icicle now. This is probably one of my new favorite distress mediums. It is so sparkly and the effect that it has when it dries is absolutely magical. So let's take a look. You see the sparkle in there? Very subtle, but mm, just like ice. Okay, so I'm going to scrape some of this out of the cap. And we're going to put this onto a piece of Ideology Christmas Ephemera. So for this, I just want to put that directly onto the candy cane. We're going to leave the little holly leaves alone. So I'm just going to carefully spread that on. Now, just like the Distress Crackle Paint, the more you add, the more defined the cracks will be. And the thinner it is, the less prominent the cracks will be. But since we're going for an icy look, I'm going somewhere in the middle. Going thin at the edges and a little bit more at the center of the piece. And of course, we've got the added bonus of the sparkle. I'm liking using the smallest palette knife in the TH Ranger line because it is much easier to slip into the little corners on the piece of ephemera. Okay, that looks good. Now, if I tilt it just right, you can pick up the little bit of sparkle that's on here. A little air bubble, I'm just going to pop that. Okay, now we're going to set this aside to dry and see how it looks later. Okay, next, let's move on and take a look at some of the snowfall medium. This is also a new medium this year that was a unique product to the Ranger Christmas launch. So this is regular grit paste, but with an added bonus of some distress glitter. When we open that, we can see the texture, and if I tilt it, you can see the little bits of glitter in there. So we're going to add some of that gritty goodness to this ephemera. I am liking this frame, and it just needs a little bit of added sparkle around the edges. So again, we'll take the palette knife, and we'll start adding. So here I'm just adding little bits and pieces of the medium around the frame on the snowy parts. And then I'll go in and add a little bit to the landscape. Okay, that looks good. Let's add just a little bit more to the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's set this one aside to dry. Next, we're going to take a look at some Crypt Paste. This stuff is absolutely amazing, and I love the faux stone look that this gives when it's dried. You can see these neat little speckles in here that help with the look. So with this, we're going to apply some of that to a spindle, and I want this to have a stone look to it, kind of like granite. So let's open this up. Mm. That stuff is fantastic. So I'm just going to scoop some out and 
I'm going to start to apply it to the spindle. So for this, I think I'm going to want to get in there with my fingers. It's going to be easier to push that into all of the detailed areas on this finial. Okay, so the grit paste will stick to anything that is porous. Wood, fortunately, is rough and porous, so this stuff should stick pretty nicely. If for some reason it didn't, I would then want to add some collage medium underneath. But since this is porous, we shouldn't have any trouble. Okay, and there is our finished finial with some crypt paste on it. Let's set this aside to dry. Next, we're going to get into some glitter and distress mica. To start with, we're going to be altering these wings. These are from the Tim Holtz Winged Impresslet set. So, to start with, we're going to need to add some embossing ink. To get the mica and the glitter to stick, we're also going to be using some Distress Embossing Sticky Powder. But first, we need to go ahead and coat these wings. Because of the intricate detail on the wings, I prefer to use the marker opposed to the dabber. Okay, let's see. That's looking pretty well covered. Let's set them aside and take care of the second set of wings while we're here. So again, we're just going to apply some of the Distress ink and then we'll get out the sticky embossing powder. All right, let's take a look at the second set of wings. Coverage is looking pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and add the sticky embossing powder. Okay, so let's pour on the sticky embossing powder. Okay, first set looks pretty good. Let's set that aside. All right, second set. Okay, that looks really good. Set that one aside as well. All right, let's go ahead and pour the rest of the sticky embossing powder back into the jar. Alright, now for the next part. This is tricky. Sticky embossing powder melts pretty quickly and it dries pretty fast. So if you're going to be adding glitter or mica flakes to something, you need to have all of your items ready to go. Otherwise, by the time you've opened the jar and started to pour, the sticky embossing powder will already be dry. So I've got my jar opened and ready to pour and I'm going to grab the squeezers. This will make it easier for me to hold on to the piece while embossing. And it also means that I won't have to change hands when things start getting too hot. Alright. Glitter is good to go and embossing is ready. We're going to mute the sound for this next part, but I do want to show this in real time. 
So we're quickly going to emboss these wings. As I am moving the heat gun across the wings, we're going to see the glue going from white to transparent, and we're going to see the black paper through it. As soon as it goes into black, we need to move quickly and get our glitter on there right away before the glue has a chance to harden. There we go. That is the magic of the sticky embossing powder. Very quickly, we were able to melt it and then add the glitter. And these wings look spectacular. Okay, just going to give that a little shake, tap off the extra glitter. And we'll set that aside. We'll go in for a close up in just a little bit, but let's do the mica flakes next. So we're going to just quickly dump all of that lovely nightfall glitter back into the jar. Okay, and let's get the next set of wings. Next, we're going to be getting the midnight mica flakes. So let's go ahead and grab our second set of wings. Again, I'm going to use the squeezers. Okay, and I'll have the jar open and ready to go. Mm. Those mica flakes are gorgeous. Okay, so again, we're gonna mute while I'm embossing, but we'll go from there. Wow, that looks pretty amazing. Okay, let me just quickly tap this off and we'll put away the extra mica flakes and then we'll go in for a close-up look at those wings. Let's take a closer look at the wings. Ooh, so sparkly. I love how we get two different effects with these two different products. Okay, so let's go ahead and hold these up. First, let's take a look at the Distress Nightfall Glitter. Mm, so sparkly. And you can see, and you can still see the detail of the wings from the impresslet. Very cool. All right, now let's look at the wings with the mica flakes. That almost looks like shattered broken glass on here. That is really cool, but in black. All right, so let's move on to our last medium. The last medium that we're going to be working with, we're going to be looking at the Distress Glitter Garland. And we're going to be altering some ideology berries. So I've got these beaded berries here, and we're going to change them up by turning them golden. All right, for this, we're going to need some Distress Collage Medium and our glitter. So I'm just going to open the Distress Collage Medium and we're going to dip the berries and then add some glitter. So with these, I'm just going to take the berry, dip it in the collage medium, both sides, whip off the excess on the edge of the jar, And then we're going to dunk it into the glitter. For the glitter, we're using garland. Now I'll just tap it off on the side and do the same thing over here. And that looks pretty cool. So with these, I'm going to gently set them across the slid for the moment. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna dip the other berries.
And this is a quick and easy way to alter some ideology pieces. We could also do this with the Distress Vintage Platinum, the Nightfall glitter, or we could go in with tinsel as well. It all depends on what look you are going for. Or we could even color some of the Distress Clear Rock Candy glitter and get ourselves a whole bunch of different colors if we used a little bit of alcohol ink with it. The possibilities for creativity are endless. Okay, let me just clear a few things away and we'll go in and take a closer look. And here we are. These are the Altered Ideology Berries. Nice and sparkly. Okay, now let's go ahead and check on the other pieces that we've been waiting to dry. Okay, now let's take a little bit of a close-up look at some of our pieces that have now dried. So first, let's take a look at the Vintage Collage Medium. This was the product that we used, and here's how our ephemera turned out. So we have a nice matte coating, and this is a little bit grungier than it was to start with. Down here is part of the original color of this chipboard. Now let's take a look at the skull. So this one is completely untouched. This one I have not altered in any way. This one though, got some of the vintage collage medium, and I also added a touch of glitter. All right, well, let's just bring these back for a second look. This is the Frosted Crystal. Frosted Crystal leaves a nice, slightly shimmery, textured look on the ephemera. Then we have some plain collage medium. This was a fairly shiny piece of ephemera, but with the collage matte medium. It's now nice and matte. No more shine. Now I'm going to pull in the snowfall piece. Now I'm going to pull in the snowfall piece. This had some of the grit paste mixed with distress glitter and we've got really cool icy bits now on this piece of ephemera. That looks just like ice. That is really cool. Okay, and we'll set that aside. Now I'd like to do a little comparison. We did some icicle, and we also had a bit of Distress Paint Rock Candy. Both of these are great products, but they each give their own unique look. So as we can see, the Distress Paint gives a more shattered glass look, which is very awesome. And the Icicle, well, it's like ice. It doesn't quite crackle in the same way. Here we've got some really big crackles, but these, well, I guess they're a bit more subtle. And they're not, I don't know, I find these to be kind of square in the way that they cracked, but these... Not so much. They're really thin little fissures and they're kind of longish cracks instead of squarish ones. So while I've got these two pieces here, I'm going to add a little bit of Distress Crayon to make those cracks and icy crackles pop even more. For the Distress Paint, I'm going to be using some Distress Walnut Stain Crayon. And I'm just gonna scribble that onto the chipboard piece and we're going to smoosh that right in. I'm also going to take just a little bit of water and that's going to help me smoosh the crayon around.
Okay, I think I might have gone just a little bit too heavy on the Distress Crayon, but not a big deal because I can blot a bit of that off. I've just added a little bit more water with the Distress Spray Mister. And I can blot a bit more of that crayon off. Okay. There we go. Now we've got a really grungy piece. All right, well, let's take a look at the icicle. So here I'm gonna take a little bit of picket fence and smoosh that in. There we go. That's a lot more subtle this time. Now it looks like we've got these really cool icy fissures up and down the candy cane piece. Oh yeah, definitely liking that. So here is Distress Rock Candy and Icicle. And here is our crazing piece. So as you can see, this is much more subtle than the cracked icicle or the distress crackle paint. Now let's add a bit of walnut stain crayon to show those crazing lines a little bit more. So I'm just going to scribble down a little bit of distress crayon, I'm going to spritz some water, and I'm going to smudge it out with my finger. There we go. Once we start smudging, it is much easier to see those wonderful crazing lines. Looks like we need a little bit more distress crayon. Smudge it out. Ooh. Now the crazing lines are really starting to pick up. That is looking very awesome. So with the crazing lines, they are generally a lot more subtle than the Distress Paint Crackle. The Crackle has a lot of definition and space between the cracks, but here it's just a small little fissure. And by smushing the Distress Crayon, we're able to see the definition of those lines. So again, these are the wings with the Distress Mica Flakes, and this is the Distress Glitter. Now that all of the glue has dried, you can see more of the detail on the wings, and it looks pretty amazing. Okay, last two elements. So here we have the finial that we've encrusted with some crypt paste. Now I have a little bit of the wooden finial showing through, but not a big deal. We're going to just take a little bit of hickory smoke Put that down on the mat. And I'm going to lightly sponge this onto the finial with a little scrap of sponge. this we've got a great piece to put into a vignette tray and there we go several different ways to alter your ephemera and ideology pieces there are so many wonderful mediums in distress and I highly recommend that you try different substrates and try playing around with these different mediums. You're going to get different effects on different surfaces. And the best way to discover what works well is to go ahead and try something. So this week, there are going to be two videos. Since you've seen how to alter ephemera and some ideology pieces, I'll also be showing you how to create a small vignette box using some of these altered bits. And if you'd like more instruction, head over to the Funky Junkie blog. Since there's a Saturday showcase, I've also provided some written instruction on the Funky Junkie blog. So I hope that you enjoy and like always, happy crafting.